If you're planning a trip to Japan's second largest city, here's how to make the most of it with the perfect 3 days in Osaka itinerary. For starters, I highly recommend you getting the Osaka Amazing Pass for 3 reasons. Number 1, it gives you unlimited rides on buses and trains, helpful because you'll be zooming around the city. And number 2, you get free admission to about 40 attractions, many of which you'll be visiting if you follow today's guide. Lastly, the pass lets you enjoy special discounts and offers at many different locations, all for a price of 20 US dollars for the one day pass or 27 US dollars for the two day pass. I think that this is a good deal for the benefits you're getting, and if you're interested to buy the pass, I've left a link to the official site in the description box below. Start your day by heading to one of Osaka's most famous and evocative sites, Osaka Castle. Originally built in 1583, many parts of the castle have been attacked and destroyed in many wars, but they've also been completely restored since 1931 keeping the original designs of the castle features intact. Inside the castle, there is an excellent museum that gives a fascinating explanation of the history surrounding the castle and of the city itself. There are also some excellent exhibits of ancient art and armour, and when you're done looking around, head to the top floor for spectacular views of the city. The surrounding moat and park make for a pleasant stroll as well as offering great views of the castle. Additionally, there are boat tours available that take you around the moat and you have the chance to see the castle from very different angles. After your visit to the castle, you might want to learn more about Osaka's history, so it makes sense to follow up with a trip to the museum. Unfortunately, you will find little to no information in English, but you can hire an English audio guide for 200 yen. The Osaka Museum of History is great for history lovers, so if this appeals to you, definitely put it on your itinerary. After a heavy dose of Japanese culture, it's time for a change of pace. We head to an area to the north of the city, commonly known as the Kita or Umeda area, for a slice of modern Osaka. This is the home of giant department stores, arcades, food courts, and izakayas. If you've been wanting to sample some Osaka delicacies, then now is your best chance. Although it won't be easy, because the choices don't seem to end. From octopus balls and conveyor belt sushi to the best quality steaks of Kobe beef, Osaka has plenty of restaurants that specialize in them. Here's a fun fact. The people of Osaka have a saying in Japanese called Kui Daure. It literally means to eat until you drop. So this tells you how much they love their food here, and you should as well. Now that you've had something to eat, it's time to explore some of the area's highlights. Sitting on the 7th floor of the HEP5 building, this ferris wheel offers spectacular views over Osaka. Getting there can be a little bit challenging because the place is a bit of a maze, but you should be able to look for directions that can lead you to the ferris wheel. My preference is to come here at night when the lights of the city are all turned on and sparkling, but the view during the day is amazing as well. If you can't get enough of Osaka's city view, then this unique piece of modern architecture is a great alternative. The outdoor roof garden, known as a floating garden observatory, offers complete 360 degree views of the city. Of course, you can also come here during the night when all the city lights come on, offering a totally different view altogether. This wonderful shrine is hidden amongst the skyscrapers and shopping arcades of Kita, and from the outside, it might not seem like much, but it is a favourite among the locals. The shrine is famous because it has a tragic story about two lovers called Ohatsu and Tokube. Due to their different status in life, their love was not destined to be, so they made an oath at the temple site before committing suicide. Although the events supposedly took place over 300 years ago, there are still plays that are held today, which continue to tell the tragic story of the couple to current and future generations. As the sun sets over Osaka, the city becomes a spectacular display of lights and colour to rival any other city in the world. A fun way to truly take all this in is by taking a river cruise at night. While there are a few options, the most popular one is the Tombori Night Cruise which takes you through Dotonbori, in the heart of Osaka, where all the neon lights are. It's going to be bright, it's going to be noisy, and most of all, it's going to be exciting. You will be thoroughly exploring this area tomorrow, so just sit back and enjoy the ride. You've had an amazing first day, time to head back to your hotel for some rest because we've got plenty more to see and do. Travelers, fishermen, and sailors often pray to the Shinto gods in these Sumiyashi shrines for protection when at sea. This is your first destination as you head south of Osaka. This shrine is one of Japan's oldest and dates back to a time before Buddhism came to the country, which means that this is purely a Japanese shrine with no external influence. 
Out of more than 2,000 sumiyoshi shrines found in Japan, this one is considered to be the most famous, especially during the new year as it receives 2 million visitors a year. One of the most famous structures on the shrine grounds is the arch bridge at the entrance, called the Sorihashi Bridge. It was originally built around 400 years ago and it provides an extremely scenic entry to the shrine. This bridge was deliberately built with a high arch to symbolize the rainbow that bridges the earth and sky. People have said that it was scarier to go down the bridge once you reach the other side than it is going up because of the steepness. This is one of Japan's oldest temples and the first to ever be built by the state. It was founded in the year 593 by Prince Shotoku who supported the introduction of Buddhism into Japan. Although the temple's buildings burned down several times throughout the centuries, they were always carefully reconstructed to reflect the original 6th century design. The outer temple grounds are free to enter, but you need to pay for admission to the inner garden and the house of treasures. The inner precinct is home to a 5 story pagoda that you can climb for some great views. A short rock from the temple is Shin Sekai, which literally translates to New World. Prior to World War II, this was home to an amusement park, but it's long gone now. Shin Sekai's charm lies in its glamorous and relaxed atmosphere, and the large colorful shop signs usually leave an unforgettable impact on visitors. It is a great place to enjoy some of Osaka's signature foods like skewered cutlets while you wash it down with an ice cold mug of Japanese beer as you take in this unique downtown area. And if you haven't had your fill of food in Osaka yet, you can head to the Kurumon Market just north of Shin Sekai. This huge street food market, just a 15 minute walk from Dotonbori, is home to all kinds of fresh produce and street vendors selling a variety of phenomenal Japanese food. Make sure to keep an eye out for some of Osaka's specialties, like the savory okonomiyaki, a pancake of deliciousness with a mix of different ingredients, and the doteyaki, beef tendon on skewers that has been simmered in miso and mirin rice wine. Because Osaka is in cattle country, it's common to get skewers with meat from top grade beef such as Kobe and Matsusaka. Welcome to Osaka's liveliest night spot. Dotonbori sits at the center of Osaka's Minami district and it is the city's most photogenic spot. Everything here seems to be fighting for your attention, from small local Japanese bars to barbecue restaurants and even the many Japanese department stores around. So whether it's sightseeing, eating or shopping, you'll find all you need right in this spot. You'll also find the world famous Glico Running Man sign here that is commonly featured in many guidebooks and websites about traveling in Osaka. Less than 30 minutes from Umeda is Mino Park. In autumn, this forested valley is one of the best places to enjoy the spectacular fire red colors and views that can only be seen at this time of the year. The best time to come is in the last two weeks of November and there are hiking trails extending for about 3 kilometers that run alongside the Mino River, all the way to the Mino Waterfall, which is a popular local attraction. The trail itself is mostly flat, so it's not a very challenging walk at all. And finally, we explore the Osaka Bay area. This area is a collection of relatively new districts of man-made islands. Here you'll find things like museums, theme parks and shopping centers, so it offers a very different experience to central Osaka, and I'm going to help break it down for you. Osaka Bay has three main areas. The most popular area is the Tempozan Harbor Village, which is the location of the Osaka Aquarium Kayukan, one of the world's largest. The last area of the bay, Sakurajima, is also very popular because that's where Universal Studios Japan is. If you have kids or if you love theme parks, spending even half a day here will still be loads of fun. What did you think about this itinerary and what would you change about it? Let me know in the comments. In my next video, I show you how to spend 7 days in Seoul, the capital of Korea. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out. And I'll see you in the next episode.